Hello guys, this is uh, Joel Grant from Garden Tower Project. Uh, last week we introduced this tower right here to you guys. It had been growing 32 days and it's now at 37 days. This tower was planted with different kales, chards, and greens, and some herbs that were left over uh, from some of our other plantings. Uh, the only reason this tower was planted is because I just wanted to demonstrate that you can boost your productivity when you're growing indoors with cheap reflective mylar film. This is horticultural film from Amazon. Um, it was $24 for 100 feet of it, which is enough to do probably five or six of these installs. This demo is to show that with our lights that we have on Kickstarter um, launching October 1st, right here, um, that these lights will allow you to produce this kind of growth in now 37 days. That's pretty awesome. It's, uh, it's in line with our expectations. So part of the reason that this tower is kicking butt here and we have uh, this many pounds of greens growing in a little over a month is because this reflective material is boosting the overall efficiency of this grow by about a third. Uh, so if you were to take uh, PAR measurements, which is the amount of photosynthetically available light or radiation that the plants can actually use at different areas around the tower, you'd see about a 30% boost on average. So you can see kind of right at the surface of this tomato, which by the way, is we're not trying to grow tomatoes here. This was just stuck in here because it, it came up on its own. Somehow a seed got mixed up and um, we just left it because, you know, it's, it's an interesting demo. So we're not trying to grow tomatoes here because this is a cool area. It's about 70 degrees uh, in this garage and tomatoes are not going to grow very fast at 70 degrees. So here we have about uh, 220 units of par. So that's a ton. Uh, that's on. That's in line with your commercial uh, commercial applications that are growing for say 20, 20 crops a year. That's really really nice output. Obviously, that's right in front of the light. Um, as you move around it, it's going to fall off. Like there's a hundred. Realistically, we're we're probably averaging around a hundred units throughout. You know all the foliage on this tower. Uh, 360 degrees there's about 80 units there um, with just three lights so I've got three of these lights installed just on the ground here on stands that um, are fabricated for us and three lights can cover this massive tower which is about four feet of foliage at least when it's fully grown uh, by about six feet tall with just three lights that's that's pretty awesome Another reason that's possible is these lights are very diffuse. Uh, they have a 120 degree diffusion angle or kind of they broadcast light in one third of a full circle and they're very even as well. So we've measured that. Uh, the evenness is actually on the site. Uh, we show you 90 degrees of um, PAR measurements to demonstrate just how even it is. If you're serious about indoor growing, you can take our advice or you can get a par meter and do some of your own lighting experiments and play around. This mylar can boost your overall par on the plants or effective light. While it will give you about a 30% boost, I just wanted to remind everybody that it's not necessary. These lights have plenty of intensity to have a very successful grow without any sort of reflective environment. So if you uh, see our video on Kickstarter, you see our photos, those are all real. There's, there weren't any reflectors around uh, when those plants were growing or any additional lights or anything like that. In fact, we kind of close the blinds and close the windows and try to keep out um, all lights so that it's an effective demonstration of what these lights really do. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is you can see I've set up all these other lights. Uh, this was because we had a request for more information on our prototypes and sort of our process. Uh, and I just want to kind of highlight that I've dug kind of all these lights out. Some of these uh, lights haven't been on for two years. I created some uh, seed starting lights with simple landscape lighting, LED landscape lighting. 
Uh, these lights are very inexpensive, but they're DC 12 volt. And what I discovered was, might as well use the PAR meter here, that the PAR values are actually really good. Uh, so there's, out of really inexpensive lights, I'm at a 130 PAR, which is really, really nice for seat starting. Um, that's enough intensity on the surface to actually give a little warmth to the soil, but it's plenty of light and it's very even. So this was a seed starting rack built years ago. Works very well. Don't have anything growing in it right now. Just put this flat in here for an example. Um, but uh, this is what got us started looking at surface mounted diode LEDs. That means that the LED is literally embedded or attached to the circuit board surface, which happens to be these aluminum strips with traces of wires going down them in a thin layer that the LEDs are mounted directly to. Well, that got us on to, hey, wonder if we can use this technology to build a less expensive grow light uh, because most of the grow lights at the time had you know, a dozen LEDs or 15 or 20, and they were very expensive, um, and they were very high intensity, high power, and high efficiency LEDs, but everything required to heat sink them, and the expense of the emitters themselves made them quite expensive, and the markups from the companies that make them are very large as well, that actually spec them out as grow lights. So since we discovered we could have really good output without needing uh, really specialty LEDs, we started playing around with it. And we grew uh, an amazing tower on, on a <laughs> completely prototype light here. This is literally just high intensity ribbon lighting that we put in a vertical format and it's driving DC at 12 volts. And uh, the output from that is fantastic for the money, but there's a downside. And the downside is efficiency. Uh, these are low voltage. There's 12 volts running in parallel. It's, it's a series parallel design, and it's very inefficient. Uh, so what happens is you have all these wires running low voltage, high current, and they're not wires. They're, they're traces that are deposited metal on a flexible circuit. And it's, it's quite inefficient because there's tons of resistive loss. So we set off to see if there was a way to build a more efficient surface mounted diode LED grow light. And the first thing we did was come up with this. This is a formed aluminum casing that uh, basically acts as a heat sink to the aluminum panel that all of these diodes are mounted to and allows you to run these up pretty high power, a uh, very effective grow light, but uh, still not all that efficient. So we uh, started working with a electronics development company uh, firm that's kind of a rapid tech group. And we came up with this panel. This panel here that's mounted to this hefty piece of extruded aluminum is much more efficient than this panel. Uh, it's also a different spectrum, but I'm, I'll get into that later. I'm not going to get into that right now. We te we've tested several different types of spectrums. This is a more efficient light than this, and it's more efficient because this is a much higher quality board, and so it has much heavier traces. And so it has, basically, you can think of it as having heavier wires running through it that conduct the energy more efficiently with less heat, uh, less resistance, less heat, higher efficiency. So more light output with less energy and less heat output. Still um, not amazing, really great output for the money, but by the time you put this in an enclosure and develop it into a final product, it's not as efficient as we wanted. An evolution of that is this light right here, and this is a full production light has 192 one watt LEDs and they're underdriven at about a half a watt. They're a balance between basically having all of these traces and extra pathways for electrical flow that all of these three lights have and having more intense 
emitters that uh, there simply aren't as many to connect and drive and the higher efficiency that comes along with having higher intensity emitters and less of them uh, but not having the cost of 3 watt LEDs or 5 watt LEDs or even 10 watt LEDs. You could create the same type of grow light with 5 watt LEDs and have one fifth as many but they're way more expensive and the overall cost would be much higher because your thermal sinking is much more complex to get rid of the heat to allow that LED emitter to operate at the right temperature where it's most efficient. So this is still a surface mounted LED um, light. It just has fewer emitters and they're more intense. And the efficiency is awesome. In fact, um, I don't have a T5 fluorescent here, but um, we've lit lots of towers with fluorescent lighting, high efficiency fluorescence. And when we take our measurements, and look at what this actually puts out at different angles, at different degrees, and different distances over the area of it. So over this full height and then a respective width. Then we actually find that it is almost 50%. It's, um, I think, 44.9% more efficient than our fluorescent lights, which of this group of lights makes it by far the most efficient. It is possible to go even more efficient, but not without cutting off parts of the spectrum. There's a lot of evidence uh, for green light being useful to plants. It also makes for a much nicer light to have in your living space. So I'm gonna unplug some of these lights so you guys can kind of see them in more detail. This, our production light, just wanna kind of show it to you. So it, it comes with hangers that can be used to go to stands like this, or they can be used uh, to hang it horizontally. And it's um, if you have a grow setup that could use a large, long horizontal light or multiple horizontal lights, uh, it's an awesome light for it. This stand is similar to the stand that will be offered um, on Kickstarter, but we're improving it. Uh, so we don't have any photos on Kickstarter of it yet. Uh, we're making it more stable, a little more complicated, but in a good way. It'll be just as durable, and it's a lot nicer than the default stand uh, available for the lights. By building our own, we're going to get to use U.S. steel, and they're going to be welded in Canada. So they will be better quality, but just as importantly, North American. So again, just going to kind of pan through this tower, and then I like I can rotate it for you. So again, these lights are available October 1st for the whole month of October on Kickstarter. We're offering exclusive pricing. Uh, the pricing is going to be significantly better than our uh, post Kickstarter pricing in our store. And the pricing is really phenomenal because we're sourcing these straight from the manufacturer and we are putting a pretty small markup on them. As far as general growing, um, optimized for vegetative plants, um, herbs, salad greens, all types of lettuces, all your cool greens, lots of what you see here. There's three kinds of kale on this tower. There's nasturtium, there's basil, there's a tomato that wasn't supposed to be there, um, but he's growing, so we'll let him grow. Um, see if I can actually rotate around this without breaking some foliage because I'm holding the phone here. So there's another side of it. So you can see uh, tons of kale and there's an extra uh, kind of curly lettuce up here. It, there's um, some parsley and probably some other herbs st stuck in there. But we'll keep this growing a couple more weeks before major harvest, I'd say. Just to remind you guys, if you can pledge early. There's um, a little bit of a early bird package. It's a small discount and we throw in uh, some of our organic seeds. Uh, we sell seeds now. We sell Baker's Creek heirloom seeds and we sell Botanical Interest uh, organic seeds and they're all great products. So if you pledge early, you'll get a little bonus uh, this year of some seed packets and some small discounts. We've already discounted a lot, so we don't have a big discount for early backers, but we really want you to back as fast as you can because 
if you back early, then this uh, Kickstarter will get a little bit more uh, viral feedback. It'll get shown to more people if it's more popular early on. So please uh, pledge early. Yeah, thank you very much. And keep sending the questions in.